Finally, Ukrainians initiated a massive scale operation across Dnipro River, and Russians are suffering enormous losses. 40,000 more of them to be eliminated as well very soon. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some uh, ridiculous uh, Russian uh, propaganda. Ooh. So, whew, today we're gonna be talking about actual Russian propaganda. So I'm sure you're all aware about the conflict happening in the Middle East and recently in the Gestan, a plane with the Jewish people who were escaping the country landed in Dagestan, and then the local residents were extremely unhappy with this, they breached the air airport fences and they decided to meet this plane, they were waiting outside, trying to see if any of those people inside the plane are actually a Jewish, and to kinda do a self-prosecution of them. And apparently, whenever Dagestan people were looking for uh, Jewish people, they were even looking inside the airplane engines, as you can see from this picture. To be honest, in my not yet personal experience, I do not think that you can hide there. But let me know what do you think. And long story short, the next day Vladimir Putin had to make a statement about these events. He said that those people in Dagestan who went to the airport, breached the defenses and were threatening the Jewish people. And all of this was the work of guess who? Exactly, the Western intelligence, Ukraine and America. He also mentioned that the things to blame for this was the social network inside Russia called Instagram. <laughs> and then one of Russian government officials, Sultan Hamzaev, he wanted to please Putin in both way, morally and most likely physically. And so he basically said that yes, this was Instagram responsible for Dagestan people threatening Jewish. So I have an idea. Let's block Instagram, VPNs, and so not let Russian people use any of these Western social medias. But it was not as ridiculous as the statement by the head of Dagestan, Sergei Melikov. He basically said that uh, those people, they should restore their reputation <laughs> and their patriotic feelings, I guess somehow disconnected, and he said that they should volunteer to go fight in Ukraine, and he expects that majority of these people will actually volunteer to go to war. I can only imagine if this is a real volunteers or it's gonna be volunteering Russian style. <laughs> when you just go to a room which is connected to the military truck just for the medical examination. And then the next time you open your eyes, you are in the front line somewhere in the east of Ukraine. But okay, jokes aside, now let me give you a very quick update from the east of Ukraine, where Russians already suffering record-breaking losses, and then there will be 40,000 more to come. And then we'll talk about the situation in the south, where Ukrainians initiated massive-scale operation across Dnipro River in the southern Kherson region. And first of all, as we refer to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continue their offensive along Kupiansk, Svatovia, Kriminna front line with uh, no reported success so far. But Ukrainians prioritize their attention mainly next to Bakhmut. In addition to that, Russians attempted an advancement to the east of Torske, but this was successfully repelled by Ukrainians, and as a result of this, they were also able to destroy two Russian tanks. Then we have even more attempts of Russians to advance along the eastern front lines, such as for example in this video where the Russian tank driver did not notice a mine, it obviously exploded, and then there was an extremely big ball of fire, and a lot of Russians inside these vehicles, they, I guess, fell asleep. But over the weekend, we received an extremely interesting to watch video from Bakhmut, where Ukrainians once again they continue their attempts, mainly to the south of the city pretty much every single day, and they released another video pretty much compilation of these combat activities. 
It is extremely intense. There is a big fire from both sides, but as a result of this, Ukrainians will be a little bit more victorious in the end. The video is definitely worth watching, so if you want to see the full uncensored version, it will be available on my Patreon. The link is down below and there is one week of free access. But wait, there is more. Because Russians try to regain their lost quote unquote positions in Kalishivka and they launched another offensive against this settlement. But as you can see from this another video, this has been successfully and fully repelled by Ukrainians. No chances for Russians at all. And then another relatively big group of Russian infantry has been destroyed by Ukrainian artillery to the north of Kordumivka. But without a doubt, the most significant combat activities in the east for the last several weeks are happening around Avdivka, where Russians already suffering massive losses, up to 30% of committed infantry. So let's talk about this really quick right now. But before we do this, if you like this style of daily updating, can you please like this video and subscribe to my channel? This shows a tremendous support for the work I do. Thank you guys so much. And so yes, to begin with, Ukrainians were able to reportedly destroy a self-propelled artillery position of Russians located to the north of Yakovlevka. Besides that, reportedly a Russian Su-25 aircraft has also been intercepted by Ukrainians near Avdiivka. And just overall, six concentration of Russian forces, an ammunition depot, three air defense systems and six artillery units has been destroyed by Ukrainians overall in the last 24 hours. And even according to the British intelligence report, Russians have been committing the most, the biggest number of forces in the smallest attack around Avdiivka since approximately middle October and reportedly up to eight brigades of Russians have been used in these attacks. And the casualties are record-breaking in terms of percentage pretty much in any battle since the beginning of this war. And here is exactly what I mean. According to the representative of Ukrainian forces Alexander Shtupun, in the last 19 days of Russian invasion into Avdivka, they lost at least 6,500 people, in addition to 250 total number of military equipment and vehicles. And if we're talking about 8 brigades, which are approximately 2,000 to 2,500 in each, 6,500 losses are approximately equal to more than 30% loss rate in slightly less than 3 weeks. And how much land Russians were able to capture? Well, according to this map in the entirety of Avdiivka invasion, they only advanced approximately 1.7 kilometers, at a cost of 30% losses among the personnel. And if we take a look at this map, this is how much Russians were able to advance over the weekend. This is the total advancement to the west of Vesele, as you can see right here, and going down this is the total advancement to the west of Opetne. Once again, the losses are 6500 people. But it looks like that it is not yet enough. For Russians. According to the same Alexander Stupan, they are now concentrating even more forces and potentially their next attack will be against Avdivka planned. And at this very moment the estimated number of Russian soldiers is close to 40,000. And knowing the rate at which they are being lost, we are expecting the majority of them to be lost or eliminated in the near future as well. And well, there you have it. Now let me give you, as promised, a brief update from the south of Ukraine before we can talk about a massive scale operation of Ukrainians across Dnipro River in the southern Kherson. But first of all, let's make a quick stop in Sevastopol, where local residents recently heard at least five extremely loud noises, which is confirmed by this video right here. But according to the Russian, Ministry of Defense, the total number of Ukrainian missiles which were launched, including attack mass, it was number of 8, and obviously Russians intercepted all of them. So I have no idea how we have videos like this, probably the black smoke is just a CGI or computer graphics. 
And then, according to Russian military correspondents, even more Ukrainian missiles have been uh, launched from the territory of most likely Mykolaiv region against the Russian concentration located in Olenivka, as you can see right here on this map. And speaking about aerial attacks, Ukrainian air defense is pretty good recently, because according to the last 24 hours, they were able to intercept all 12 of Russian Shahid drones and two H-59 missiles. And ultimately, it looks like that Russians tried to resume their combat activities in Velika Novosilka frontline. And as you can see from this video, a Russian armored fighting vehicle with at least eight crew members next to Priyutny was trying to advance and was obviously subsequently destroyed by Ukrainians. And due to the lack of response from the Russians, no even medical team tried to approach them. Looks like the majority of them, or maybe even all of them, they uh, fell asleep. And now is the time for the main event of the day. Because Ukrainians looks like launched finally a large scale massive operation across Dnipro river in the southern Kherson. Most likely this is the beginning of the liberation of the rest of the region. And first of all, the very first thing worth mentioning is that Ukrainian artillery was also able to destroy a Russian T-90M modern combat tank along with its infantry and crew members to the south of Pitstepnye. Next, Ukrainian artillery also was able to destroy another assault group of Russians located next to Krynki. And then, as you can see from this video, which shows us the temporarily occupied Russian territory of the Kherson region, a lot of Russian positions, military bases and concentration of forces are on fire. And even the very same report by the Institute for the Study of War also confirms that Ukrainians now finally are able to start confidently crossing Dnipro river and the majority of their cross water obstacle mission is happening to the south of Antonovsky bridge and reportedly they were able to push Russian invaders as deep as 7 kilometers into Kherson region and get extremely close to Oleshki, the very first and extremely important city on the left side of Kherson. And I mean, just take a look at this map. This is how much territory became contested by Ukrainians. Yes, for now the territory is only contested, but it only confirms the fact that Ukrainians are starting to cross Dnipro River. They gain even more reinforcements and much more soldiers are getting on the other side, preparing for the further liberation. And even, potentially, the biggest news from the south for the last several months is that Ukrainian special forces were able to liberate Krynki. They even released this video, which you can see on your screens right now, though this is not yet confirmed by this map. And this is exactly why it is so important. As of right now, it is pretty much 100% certain that Ukrainians were able to cross Dnipro river and even gain the foothold on the left side of Kherson region. And as of right now, they are not able to retreat anymore, simply because they have water behind them and crossing back is no longer an option. You will become an easy target for the Russians. The Ukrainian comrades, they understand this as well, so they will not leave as the ones who crossed first, they will not leave them on the other side alone. Which basically means even more Ukrainian soldiers are coming. They're about to cross Dnipro as well in the near future. And since it is already, the shore is already under Ukrainian control, the landing operations will be much, much easier. The very first line of defense of Russians across Dnipro river is now fully breached. And even the very first settlements, such as Krynki, start to be liberated. And as soon as Ukrainians start receiving more help, more soldiers will come, artillery will get closer, helicopters and planes will start flying and destroying the Russian positions on the other side. This is when we might see some very rapid developments in Kherson region, just like we saw exactly one year ago in November 2022. 
And in case Ukrainians are successful here as well, and they are able to liberate the rest of Kherson region, as you can see, Crimea will be fully separated from the rest of occupied Ukraine, making southern logistics for Russians to be a complete nightmare. Last year all of this happened within just uh, several weeks, so let's see how it's going to be this time. It always starts slow, just one settlement liberated at a time, and then the next thing you know, half of the region is also liberated. So if you don't want to miss any of these potentially crucial events in this war, just once again guys, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.